All right, so I screwed an air weight to the ceiling and this is a piece of half inch plywood right here. Fits nice and tight. If you look to my belly, you gotta like the video. Them's is the rules. How much weight can an air weight hold? I don't know, let's find out. First we put a screw. Right now, the owner of air weights is like, please stop. I've got these window weights. It's the only thing that I can find with like actual weight. How much weight can an air weight hold? One window weight. Two window weights. Should we go for three? I think we should. I don't know if my little makeshift hook is gonna, gonna be cool with this or not. All right, that's actually kind of heavy. Not expecting that. Wow. <laughs> All right, so what is this proving? Absolutely nothing. But we can show you exactly what this thing can do and I'm so excited about that. So buckle in because we have a lot to go over. No way. Look at all that. If you're confused right now, this is a work holding solution for CNC machining. It runs on a 110 volt vacuum pump, so you don't even have to worry about 220. Not only is it saving you on the power consumption, having to figure that portion out in your shop, more importantly, it's saving you money because this thing is like a third the cost of the cheapest competition that there has been for vacuum work holding. Yeah, it's changing the game a ton. They are lightweight, modular, easy to store, and the way that it works is with all these little pods and all these little strips. When you get your air weight kit, it comes with a ton of bits and bobs, but most importantly is going to be coming with this modular vacuum table as well as your vacuum pump. Like I said earlier, this is a 110 volt vacuum pump and is oilless. It is never going to need any maintenance, and I have run Run this thing for over two hours and not had a single issue with it. I went ahead and hooked mine up to my Maso right here. I use the coolant flood function on the back because I do not have my machine hooked up for the vacuum function because my vacuum is a 220 vacuum. So I went ahead and used that additional receptacle that was just open and ready to be used. And that's where I plugged in this machine. So that was just an added little bonus that made the process just a little bit easier. The vacuum table itself is 23 and three quarter inches by 23 and three quarter inches. So if you're somebody like me and you have a four by four machine, you could actually fit four of these things on top of it. One of these pumps can service two of these units. So if I were to do four of these pods up on top of here, I would need to have two different pumps. Of course, you can buy all the parts separately if you have different things already in your shop, but the kit is the way to go if you're just somebody looking to go ahead and get started with vacuum work holding. Now, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of the hesitation that the majority of people have is based on two things, money and power. I've seen a few people on YouTube go ahead and hook up like a bunch of PVC pipes and everything underneath their tables, four by eight machines, stuff like that. And I've really been tempted to get into that. And after I did all the numbers, I realized that I was gonna be spending around $3,000 just to get to a place where I was starting something that I've never done before. So I was lucky enough to sit down and have a very long conversation with the owner of Airweights, Jace, and he told me all about vacuum work holding. He's been doing it for quite some time and he knows all the ins and outs. And honestly, a lot of it really went over my head. If you're somebody who's gonna nerd out with him, he loves to talk about it. So go ahead and hit him up with an email if you're interested in his system. But for people like me, I just wanna know if it works, right? So the way that this works is extremely simple. Up top, it has nine of these little, I don't know, rubber stoppers that go into these holes and this entire field is covered in channels. These channels are what is going to be able to hold the air and pull down your workpiece. Over here, there's actually a tenth little rubber grommet and that is a very clever way to be able to hook up your probe if you're using a probe for your CNC machine so that you can probe off the bottom of your material rather than the top so that you can set that as your Z limit to make sure that you're never running into this thing. And that is a concern because normally when people have vacuum work holding systems, they wanna make sure that they are never completely plunging through their profile passes and screwing up the surface because the second that you add in additional channels, there is the risk of your piece going ahead and flying off the machine. Now, if you don't know anything about CNC work holding, that is just a, a constant thorn in your side as you're trying to figure out your project, making sure that you have enough space to be able to access your workpiece in the different ways that you're trying to do that. Oftentimes, you've seen me on the channel use double-sided tape as well as screws in the corners 
as well as uh, I have tried clamps before and then for my bigger pieces, for my four foot long pieces of hardwood that I fill up the bed, I make sure that I use these clamps right here. They bring a lot of force at the very ends of the boards, but not very much in the middle. And that's where our vacuum work holding really shines, is being able to get consistent downward force all the way across the bottom of your work piece. If you're working with a very porous material, you can just put on blue tape on the bottom of it and then it will suction right down. The way that these channels work is together with grid gasket. This stuff is sticky on one side and not on the other. And you put it down inside the work area of the piece that you're working on. And that's what's going to allow this vacuum to only affect a certain area. There's obviously endless customization that you can do with this. You have all these little indexing pins as well as nylon stuff, tons of extra little plugs just to make sure that you have enough. And he has so many different ways that you can reliably and consistently index your parts so that you're just popping them on and off because that is one of the biggest reasons to look into vacuum work holding, not only for the reliability and the consistency, but also just to be able to improve your workflow overall. If I were to make a ton of whiskey smokers, this is something where I wouldn't have to make 60 of them at a time. I could be making 12 of them at a time and just do a whole lot smaller batches and not have to worry about the consistent reset every single time that I was running a program with all the double-sided tape and everything that goes with cutting those out. Now you just heard me talk about whiskey smokers and if you've been around the channel for a long time you know that I profile cut those all the way through because I absolutely hate going back and cleaning things up. And that is another little trick up the sleeve of the airweight. So this right here is just a piece of half inch MDF that I've gone ahead and covered with this all-star grid gasket tape stuff up on top. This is a separate purchase that you can make, but it is a very easy accessory that you can put down for your airway. You can now cut all the way through your piece of wood and it's going to go into this sacrificial bit before it ever intercepts the vacuum table. And it's gonna shine really, really well for plywood projects. If you're somebody like me who uses hardwood a whole lot and you're wondering if this is going to work for you, yes, it will work for you. It's gonna work extremely well you just really need to make sure that if you're using a very porous wood to go ahead and put some blue tape on the bottom of it and that's gonna make the whole process go a lot smoother. I've also found that for very small parts that I'm engraving or cutting out or anything like that, that the air weights specifically like a lot of surface area. The more surface area that it has to be able to pull down on, the more reliable it's gonna be able to hold your material overall. This whole thing is incredibly modular. So it's got this very small vacuum tube and it just goes into this quick connect. So you just push it in and there you go. It is ready to be used. You can move this thing anywhere that you want. Obviously earlier on the video, I had it screwed up to the ceiling because it, it's no hassle at all just to be able to pull this thing around. You cannot say that about any other vacuum work holding system on the market. And Airweights has just figured out a very easy way to be able to throw this on your machine, use it when you're done, be able to take it away and just not have to worry about the entire system at all. If you're somebody who is going to be using this a lot and you know that you need to index it in the exact same place on your CNC machine every single time, using your machine to go ahead and locate all the holes and then putting threaded inserts into your waste board so that you can just bolt this down repeatedly in the same time is definitely the way to go. Every single purchase of an Airweights weight kit is going to come with a ton of different files as well so that you can use those to make the jigs that you need so you're not having to get this thing and then measure it out. All of that comes with it. And I asked Airweights if they would be able to give a discount out for people who watch the channel. So if you want to go ahead and get one of these, you can get 10% off with code Hamilton. The link will be down in the description below. Using that link is a very easy way to support the channel as well as save you a little bit of money in the process. <sighs> Okie dokie, because I know that there's going to actually be people who are like, oh, well, Hamilton didn't even show us how much it would hold. See how much it holds. All right, cool. God, you know how you just never zip tie the zip ties right the first time? Just me. One. So math wise, this is now seven and a half pounds. Right now, seven and a half pounds. And this is why I stopped it the first time because like that's a significant amount of weight. Um, and it being upside down and holding it like, I would have never thought that it would have done that. Uh, that's why I like yanked the cord because I was like, I needed the shot, but there we go. Over 11 pounds. 14 pounds. That's pretty nuts. 17 and three quarter pounds. No way. All right, 21 and a half pounds. No. <laughs> All right, so I can't find any more window weights, so here's a really big wrench. And um, 
this is how much it weighs. I don't know how much it weighs, but I'll, I'll figure that out and put it in with the editing. All right, so 21 and a half plus what I would assume is about five pounds. So over 25 pounds. That's, I can't believe it. I literally can't believe it. Um, I mean, I've got more rusty stuff that I can just keep on throwing on it and I'll just let y'all know the weight. I'm assuming this is about three pounds. So maybe we're around 28 pounds at this point. Still very afraid it's gonna drop. Maybe it'll do over 30. Maybe it already is over 30 and I just don't know. I would assume this is around like four pounds. If this holds, it'll definitely be over 30 pounds. Wow. I mean, look at all that. This is a 110 motor. It, it might sound a lot louder than it actually is in real life. I mean, like I'm just talking normal. The thing is incredibly quiet. Here's an old dusty cheese board from the corner. It might be like a pound or two. Alright, a bunch of old adjustable wrenches. <laughs> I thoroughly miscalculated what I should have done at the beginning of this video. There's that. Alright, I found a sledgehammer and it's very heavy and I just drilled a hole in it just so I could <laughs> put a zip tie through it. Um, it doesn't say the exact weight on it, but y'all will know. I, even though I don't. I'm assuming we're approaching 40 pounds right now. <laughs> this one's heavy. This is totally gonna make it fall. If this doesn't, I, I don't know what we're gonna do. All right. No way. Look at all that. That is absolutely insane. Nothing's different. The screw is not going into the air weight. I, can, I will prove it at the very end of this. If for some reason it doesn't drop, I'll cut power again. The screw is not through the plywood. This is the box that I keep the window weights in. Now I gotta find more zip ties. All right, here's a box fan. It's totally going down. There's no way. There's <laughs> no way it's holding this. When this falls, I'm gonna break all my box fans. <laughs> this box fan is very heavy. It is old, it is metal. <laughs> like, I have, y'all know how much weight is on there right now. I have no idea. I'm assuming it's like 53 pounds. Am I close? Mm. Honey, how was your day at work? Yeah, there's absolutely no way this is holding it. The screw broke! The wood's still up there! The screw broke! All right, y'all know how much weight that was. Thank y'all so much for taking your time to watch this video. Oh man, see you in the next one. Bye.